Hey, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and today I'm going to talk with you a little bit more about mint. So mint is a really great crop. It's in high demand everywhere you go. Bars love it, consumers love it, especially during the summer. A lot of things are made with mint. And uh, so for that reason, a lot of growers really love growing this crop and they can get a lot of money out of this crop. So some things to know about mint. Um, if you're starting from seed, you're usually like 14, 16 days for germination, another like five to six weeks at least before you can transplant that seedling. And then you're looking at at least six weeks, if not seven or eight sometimes, to get it to the point where you can start harvesting it. So it's a slow starter. The thing is, is once it's growing, you can cut it and cut it and cut it and cut it and just keep cutting it until it basically gets so big it barely fits in the tower anymore. So um, in that regard, it's one of those, it's kind of an investment crop. Um, now a faster way to do that or a way to speed that up is you just start with cuttings. And uh, cuttings can be a great way to go with mint because it roots out, it's very great, uh, it's, it's very responsive to cloning, it roots out really fast and you can transplant it uh, really quick and get towers going really, really fast. You can also divide towers once they get a little, over, little overgrown as well. So lots of options there for propagation. Um, as far as the crop itself, it likes cooler temperatures typically, good full sun, we're typically talking, you know, um, a little bit longer day length, 14 to 18 hours, somewhere in that range. And it likes a little bit more of a neutral pH, so it doesn't like going super acidic like some of the other uh, herbs do. Um, mint does uh, pretty darn well uh, in 6.57, so mid sixes, um, ideally. If you're running it with a lot of other stuff, you just kind of shoot for the mid sixes and uh, they stay pretty happy. It is a vigorous grower. It grows really, really fast once it builds up some root mass. So once it has some root mass, uh, it will just keep growing and growing and growing. You can cut it back to the crown with no fear of really hurting the plant significantly. It just takes a little longer to grow out again. But, uh, so in that regard, you know, complete harvests are a total possibility with this crop. And then you just regrow from the crown. So mint seed is not particularly expensive and there's a lot of it. Mint seeds, when you get them in, are super, super tiny. And uh, once the mint starts to flower, it produces a lot of seed. And so, yeah, I mean, the seed is, is uh, pretty priced pretty well. If you're starting from seed, you'll get a lot of plants out of a fairly small packet of seed. It's, a, it's not a great germinator. It's a little slow and um, it can be a little tough to grow from seed. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. That's one reason why most people, they may start kind of their initial, all of their initial plants from seed, but then in the end, they end up almost always going to cloning uh, their healthy plants to get uh, the materials for new uh, towers or new plants. Really kind of an attractive crop. Um, this one's showing a little bit of a deficiency, but um, it can turn a really, really rich green. And um, some of these larger leaf varieties like this are, are really quite pretty. And they look great, they're great for garnishes, they look beautiful in drinks, and um, they're, of course, great for cooking with when you get uh, a much larger leaves, uh, there's a lot less uh, kind of prep work to, to get the plant ready to use for chefs and for bartenders, that kind of thing. So um, it's a pretty crop. It grows in very thick on the tower, so the towers are attractive if you're considering live sales. It's a great crop in that regard. Um, and the taste is really quite good if you get it right. Now the thing to, to remember with mint is that um, some conditions cause it to be a little bit more bitter than have some of those really good aromatic compounds that give mint its flavor. So you wanna kind of watch your environmental conditions, make sure it's not getting too hot and staying too hot um, or you'll end up with a lot of bitterness. Make sure it's not um, you know, growing too fast. Uh, make sure that it's getting challenged every now and then uh, to get those flavors going, but not so much that it just turns into a bitter mess. So um, it requires a little bit of management in some systems. In some systems, it grows great from day one. No management at all. Things are just perfect for mint. What about pests? Mint is not particularly pest prone. Uh, you will see aphids show up from time to time. Thrips, thrips can be an issue here and there. Um, one of the nice things about mint is that it just doesn't suffer from a lot of the pest problems that other herbs do. There are a lot of varieties of mint. Not all of them are true mints, okay? So uh, you've got your spearmints and your peppermints and your garden mints and your sweet mints. Uh, garden and sweet mints are typically kind of the same thing. Um, and then you've got all of these novelty things uh, like uh, chocolate mint and uh, 
I don't even, I don't even know. There's, there's a lot of them, orange mint and, and all of these different types of mint. A lot of those are actually not true mints. So a lot of those uh, have mint-like flavors combined with other flavors, but in the end, they're not a true mint. So when we talk about mints, we're talking about spearmint, peppermint, and then like sweet or garden mint. Primary customers for mint are going to be uh, restaurants, uh, bars, and grocery stores. Uh, a lot of consumers really like mint. It tends to be kind of a seasonal thing with consumers, but in bars you can sell mint year round. They're always making drinks with mint. It's super popular. And if you have good mint, you'll have no shortage of customers when it comes to, to bars. Uh, grocery stores also sell a lot of mint. If you've seen mint there, it does not do well with being cut and being stuck in a clamshell. So if you walk into a store with a live tower of mint, you can offer them a real, real uh, compelling product to be selling to their customers. Because the stuff in the clamshells, it is a shadow of what it once was. It does not have the flavor, doesn't have, have the appearance. It looks like crap. And uh, so whenever someone has the opportunity to cut their own live, brand new, fresh mint, they're gonna take that opportunity. Thanks so much for watching. If you want more information on this crop, check out our recommended crops list and check out our blog. We talk about this crop in detail there. Um, thanks so much for watching and if you find value in these videos, please do subscribe.